the Bismostera, producing a new leaf in November. Such a freaking overachiever, this one. Hi everyone, this is Mary and welcome to my Oasis Live. So here I am with yet another winter care for houseplants video, which I'm pretty sure you've seen this type of video many times already. And I hesitated making this video too, just because there are plant parents who have more experience and more knowledge taking care of houseplants over the winter that have already shared their expertise with us. But I figured as a new plant parent, I've only been in the plant game since mid-April and it's November, so that's roughly about six months. So I've only been a plant parent for about six months and I'm pretty sure there are other plant parents like me who might have a smaller collection compared to others, but it is our first time taking care of this many houseplants over the winter and we don't have the fancy grow lights or high-end humidifiers yet. So we're hoping to be able to do this on a budget and maybe in a more sustainable way. So I figured those plant parents in a similar situation as me can relate and could benefit from me sharing what are my strategies and plans to take care of my houseplants over the winter. So this video will be divided into three topics, watering, lighting, and temperature control. If you're looking for information on pest control, soil, and fertilization, I feel like this is more of a 101 video and those topics are more of a 102 video. So I'm not gonna go in depth on soil fertilization and pest management, but I will be discussing them briefly throughout different sections of this video. And as per usual, if you wanna skip ahead to different sections, the timestamps are down in the description. So before we start, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't yet and follow me on Oasis Live on Instagram. So yeah, let's get on to this video. As the season gets colder, watering my plants become less frequent, at least in theory. I still find myself watering plants every day even though I'm watering less plants if that makes any sense. So figuring out a new watering schedule for my plants is not just an adjustment for me, it's also an adjustment for them so, and getting it wrong can cause my plants to struggle. And as the holidays also gets closer, we get busier, the days are shorter, it's really impossible and impractical to still be checking each and every plant every day to, to see if they need watering or not. So what I found that works for me is I started using the planter app. Others use spreadsheets, journals, online calendars to help them track their watering schedule, but those methods just doesn't seem to work for me and it doesn't and I can't keep up with that in the long run. So what worked for me is using the planter app. I've searched for different apps that will help me with figuring out my watering schedule for my plants. And this is the one that seemed to have worked. I've been using the app for over a month now and I've only used the free version and it works pretty well for me so far. But like with any program or application, planter is very dependent on the information I initially put in it. So when I first downloaded planter, I have to enter every single plant that I have into the application and also set their water reminders. So that seemed a little bit tedious, but it's worth it in the end. I entered about 44 plants initially into the app and it took me about 30 minutes, maybe less than an hour at most to do all of that. But after that, it's a pretty much very easy app to use and it just gives me reminders of almost every day of which plants that I need to water. The app also have other features, which I'm going to show you in a little bit. But for me, the main thing that I use it for is just to remind me of my watering schedule. So this is how I add new plants on the planter app. I click the add plant button and then I tap on capture so I could take a photo of the plant. And this plant I got at Lowe's for clearance for a dollar. I got it like before Halloween and I'm not exactly sure what kind of cactus it is. So I'm just gonna put cactus number one because I got two of them and then hit enter. And then for the reminders, I am gonna hit water. So now I'm gonna create its watering reminder. I'm just gonna pick a date on when I last watered it, which was October 29th, the day I got it and hit OK and I'm going to water this let's say every 30 days since it's a cactus it doesn't need to be watered that much and notification time of morning at 8 a.m. it's fine so I'll add it 
and as you can see down here there are other reminders that I could set like fertilize, rotate, mince and prune. I don't plan fertilizing any plants over the winter season so I don't need that. As far as rotate and mince things I don't need reminders for them and as far as the other features repot top dress custom reminder these come with the pro version but I don't need it. And I could also add more details like scientific name and description but this also comes with the pro version so all I'm gonna do is like hit add plan and now it is in the app already. So it says I last watered it on October 29th. My reminder is set to water every 30th day and I have 22 days left before I need to water it. And my next watering day is on November 27th. And if I wanna make notes regarding this plant, I just hit journals. This is why I don't need the other app features. I just use the journal entry. So if I want to take another photo of the plant to show its progress. So I'm just gonna take the photo again like I did earlier. And if I wanna ed indicate the health of the plant using emojis, so I think this cactus is in a relatively great condition. So I'm gonna put the starry eye. I could put the height if I want to, if I wanna keep track of the plant growth, but I'm fine with just taking photos of it. And under free text, that's where I make notes of the plant if there's anything special or out of the ordinary that happens to it like this plant I repotted it the day I got it so I'm just gonna put repotted on October 29th and I'm just gonna scroll down and create entry so now it will say under journals that on November 5th 2019 I wrote that I repotted the plant on October 29th. Here's what it looks like on the day and I think it is in pretty healthy condition. Under the garden tab is all the plants that I have entered in the planter app and if they have the green color means they're still doing fine. If they're blue it means I just watered them today. So under today it will show you the plants that needs watering. So the golden poth needs watering today and I did water it so I'm just gonna hit water but if I determine that I don't need to water it today it could go one more day without watering I'll hit postpone but since I did water it today I'm just gonna hit water. If I want to adjust the watering schedule of any plant let's say the aloe vera large I have it to water every 30th day. If I think that's too much or too little, I just can go to the water reminders and make the adjustments if I wanna change it to 35 days. So I'm just gonna click save and the reminder will now say water the plant every 35th day and I have 22 days left before I need to water it again. If for some reason I need to delete a plant off my garden list, I'll just hit the three dot icon on the top right and it will give me the edit or the delete option. But yeah, that's pretty much the basics of the planter app. So here are some of the plants that I need to water today according to planter. And because I'm still in that transition stage with these plants in figuring out their new water schedule, I just, I don't go by with what just planter tells me. I still do check the plant itself if it actually needs water. So like for this hardly philodendron and for these pothos, I would first check their soil and it is actually dry. And because these are smaller pothos and philodendrons, I will water them now. But for my larger philodendrons and pothos, I don't just go by how dry the soil is. I wait for the leaves to become softer and also droop a little bit before I water them. But again, since these are smaller plants, I will be watering them now. So over the winter season, I prefer bottom watering my plants, especially my smaller ones, just cause that way I can make sure that they get just the right amount of water they need. I don't overwater them, thus preventing root rot. And it also helps with pest management that I don't provide a moist soil for the pests to breed in. So what I'll do is I'll put it into a tray like this and just pour water onto the tray, maybe like a third or halfway through depending on the number of plants and the size of plants that I'm placing on the tray. And then I'm just gonna let it absorb the water. So the good thing about bottom watering, well it could be a good thing or bad thing because bottom watering does take time, 
but what I can do is just leave it like this and come back a few minutes even an hour later to see if they're finished absorbing the water from the tray so sometimes the water would run out sometimes there will be leftovers and that's okay the good thing about this bottom watering too is I don't waste a lot of water because whatever is water is left I could either store it again for the next plants or if I have another batch of plants that I need to bottom water then I'll just put it in the same tray and maybe add a little bit of water so yeah so that's how I water my smaller plants over the winter the bigger plants I do both I do top watering and bottom watering that's what I did over the summer but right now it might be difficult for me to bottom water the plants because I would have to take them in the bathroom to do that and I'll have to leave it there for a long time if I want to bottom water it then that prevents them from getting the light that they need so what I do is I still just stop water it and just let it drain in the bathtub like I did with this monstera I watered this yesterday so you can see the soil is wet so I just stop water this one and just make sure the water drained through and I was I had it in the bathtub and gave it a little bit of a shower as well to remove all the dust from its leaves so I'm not going to be going over extensively on grow lights in this video. I feel like there are really tons of videos out there from people who have better knowledge on grow lights. I would link some below that I've watched and highly recommend. But what I gathered from most of this video is that you don't need to buy a bulb that is labeled a grow light for it to work for your plants. So you can get an ordinary artificial light that has a specific color temperature range and lumens that would be suitable for your plants. So when it comes to providing artificial lights for my plants, I don't plan on changing out or adding in a new lighting system into my room except for changing out the bulbs in my side table lamp and in my chandelier. For my side table lamp, I have two kinds of bulbs that I recently bought. The first one is this GE Grow Light. This is the first one I bought. I first heard about this specific grow light, I think from Summer Rain O's Instagram. She was doing a giveaway on this specific grow light and this is how it looks like. So it is an LED grow light. It produces a white light. I, like. I couldn't use a purple light because the grow light is going to be on my side table lamp. So it's not just for my plants, it's for me as well. And I don't think I could function in this room with a purple light. I got this at Amazon for $11.99. You could get a refurbished one for $9, but since the price difference is so little, I just decided to go with a brand new one. And you could also get this with a purple light, but like I said, I prefer using a white light. So this is what I got. And so far it's been working well. At first, I actually had this downstairs for the citrus plants. It's an overhead plant. And those citrus plants are still flowering and bearing fruits and this grow light has been amazing for them ever since we moved it back inside. I brought it back into this room just because it has a broad surface that it covers. It covers my plants from this vanity all the way to the plant shelf. But, this, but the second artificial light that I got I feel is as good as this grow light which is this one. This is also from GE. It's classic LED, it's not a grow light, and it is a daylight bulb. It has a 100 watts equivalent, but it's only 15 watts, it's LED. It's actually dimmable. Usually lights that have higher lumens or color range, they're not dimmable. But this one's actually dimmable, not that I need it, I don't, but if that's something you need, this is something that you could look into. And its brightness is 1600 lumens, which is really bright. And like I said, its color temperature is daylight. So if the color temperature in an artificial light bulb packaging doesn't indicate it in Kelvins, just see what kind it is. If it's marked daylight, it's most likely in the 5000 Kelvin and above, which is from what I've learned from YouTube videos, it is good enough artificial lighting for your plant. I think one video that I watched from Erica Lodes, she recommended a color temperature of 6000 to 6500K, but another video that I watched said that 5000K is more than good enough. Anything higher than that doesn't really make much of a difference, so it's kind of like with sunblock. 
the higher the SPF, the better, of course, but in reality, anything over SPF 30, the difference is not that much when it comes to protecting us from the sun. This is kind of like that with the bulbs. Of course, if you can get something that's in the 6,000, 6,500 range, then that's great. But if you can get something that's marked daylight or that has at least 5,000 K color temperature, that's good enough. And when it comes to lumens, Erica also recommended getting, getting something in the 1500 to 1800 range and this one has 1600 lumens. This box also comes with two bulbs and this one's about like $8 something so this is way cheaper than just getting one bulb for $11.99. And in my opinion, it works as good. I feel like this one is actually a lot brighter than this one. But this one is 15 watts and this one is 9 watts. Honestly, this one is a good substitute for this one if you're looking for a cheaper and that is as good as a grow light. So now that it is night time, I've turned on my side table lamp that has the GE grow light in it. And you can see how bright it shines on my plant and it shines light equally from my plants that I have on my plant shelf all the way to the plants that I have in my vanity which is really good. That's why I have it here. It covers a lot of surface and real estate when it comes to providing light for my plants. To compare, I switch out the lights in my side table lamp with this bulb. And as you can see, it is very bright. Personally, I think it is brighter than the GE Grow Light. It does cover a lot of surface area too from my vanity to my plant shelf. But if I am going to nitpick, I don't think it is as bright over there on my plant shelf as it is here in my vanity. But again, that is nitpicking. This light is definitely a perfect substitute for the GE Grow Light. So if you want to save some money, I would get this instead of the GE Grow Light. For the lights in my chandelier, this is what I got. This is the GE Crystal Light 6 ball value pack for chandeliers. So I originally bought some from Amazon. but I don't know if they were defective or I just got the wrong base of bulbs. I had to return it. I went to Lowe's and to see if I can find chandelier lights that have high lumens and has a daylight color temperature. But it's very hard to find because chandelier lights are meant to be decorative. So it's hard to find really bright ones. And this is the brightest that I found. It has 650 lumens each on the bulb. And, it's, and that's not really high. But since I'm using four of them in the chandelier, I figured their combined brightness would compensate still higher than what I originally had, which was about only 300, 350 lumens each. So this one has been working pretty well for me. It provides extra lighting that I need for my plants when my side table lamp is not enough. But at the same time, it is 60 watts. It's not LED. Even though it says it is energy efficient and it only costs $7 annually based on 3 hours of use every day, I still try not to switch it on for a long time during the day. I probably have it at most 2 hours a day and a little bit in the morning and a little bit in the evening. I mostly count on my side table lamp to provide lighting for my plants and in my room in general. And just to also show you the amount of light that I get from my chandelier, I am also going to turn it on. So that's how bright it gets. So this is my room at night with the chandelier and the and the side table lamps on. So my plants get really great amount of light just from this too. And I'm satisfied with this. I don't need a more elaborate grow light setup for the plants that I have in my room. That's the lighting situation in my room. Those are the bulbs that I use that still mostly count on natural light to help provide lights for my plants. My goal for my plants as far as lighting is just to help them survive the winter season. I'm not looking for them to grow or bear flowers or whatnot. I mean, I would love for my Hoyas to actually bear flowers, but they haven't yet. I don't think they will this season. Otherwise, I just want my plants to survive the winter. But as I will show you later, some of my plants are actually still growing, even in November already. And I also have stopped fertilizing my plants for the most part, the last time I fertilized was maybe in the middle of October, end of September, but some of them are still going and still producing new leaves. And I know some people said that you still have to fertilize if you see some growth in them. But for me, I know the plants are moving towards dormancy and 
they don't need that much light let alone fertilization for their metabolism so i try to keep my hands off fertilizing my plants and i don't think they really need it right now i could wait until the next growing season to fertilize them so that's it for the lighting slash a little bit of the fertilization section and on to temperature control so when it comes to temperature control it's still a learning curve for me because even though the season is getting colder the weather is very finicky sometimes we'll get really cold days some days we'll get really sunny days and the temperature changes throughout the day as i'm sure if you live in the east coast you could totally relate to that you'll get really cold mornings and it will get really hot in the afternoon cold again in the evening and then in the middle of night it's completely freezing so sometimes at night before i go to bed it's cold but still not that cold so i'll have my windows open to give me some fresh air but then at the middle of the night it will be freezing cold so i'll wake up and then close the windows so and we haven't turned on our heater yet we don't find the need to do it yet we're still in the 40s and 50 degrees range for the most part so we don't feel the need to turn on the heat yet we have the ac off so that's why sometimes i open my windows or have my fan on so that's kind of like tricky with the changing temperatures during the day and it's also a struggle for the plants as well because sometimes during the day i'll open the windows to give them fresh air but then i would leave and forget to close the windows at night and they are getting cold air but so far none of them have suffered yet and i tried to be very diligent with closing the windows if i'm leaving the house and i also change out my curtains if you watch what a vlog of mine maybe two vlogs ago that i change out my curtains into thicker ones just to help prevent the draft coming into the room i do have three windows which is a good thing for light not a good thing for temperature control i also don't want to spend too much on a space heater this is the space heater i'm kind of looking at which is i think is reasonable and affordable and tolerable when it comes to the noise level as much as i want the really quiet space heater like the dyson ones they're like hundreds of dollars i can't afford that right now so i'm just sticking to something that's in the 30 dollar price range and i have a stand-up fan from this brand which i'm really happy about so maybe their space heater also work the same way it's not that loud but when it comes to space heaters you could also thrift them i've seen plenty of them at goodwill that you could buy i thought about thrifting one myself if i can't find something that i like that's affordable maybe i you could find something that's actually high end at the strip stores it could happen i've seen it happen before and the good thing about goodwill at least among thrift stores they actually do check if the electronics is working so if you're worried about the space heater being faulty you can be rest assured that goodwill does check them if they are actually still working and also with goodwill at least with the goodwills in my area you could return an electronic that was purchased either for store credit or exchange it for another item as someone who co who frequently thrifts i am okay with just making the exchange or just getting the store credit if for some reason i don't like the space heater that i thrifted i have done that with the if you remember one of my thrift hauls i got the handheld sewing machine it didn't work for me at all it was working it's just that i didn't know how to work it so i just ended up returning it and got it for store credit which the store credit i got for that i put towards into paying for the plant shelf that i got later on you could thrift a space heater if you need one or if you want to buy a new one the one i recommend is the one that i am planning to get maybe there will be a black friday sale on it that's why i'm also waiting to purchase one so hopefully there's a black friday sale on space heaters if there's one i'll make sure to let you know i might do a black friday cyber monday deals for plant lovers video next two weeks so watch out for that one but once we turn on the heat and have a space heater going the air is gonna get dry which is bad news for plants maybe not all plants especially the plants that don't really require high humidity but over the winter with a cold temperature and a dry air having a humidifier might still benefit even those plants that don't require high humidity as you might know this Levoit humidifier comes well recommended among plant youtubers it's in almost everybody's wish list it has really nice features and i can see why 
plant youtubers recommend it or really want to get one I do like that one but there's also another humidifier that I have my eyes on which i believe have the same features as the levoid one but i like the design better just because that one will not take up any real estate on any surface that i have on my room it could be put on the floor and it's tall and it's sleek and it could also be an oil diffuser which i really like and i believe it's also in the same price range as the levoid one but as mentioned both of them are just wishless humidifiers right now and because of the plants that i currently have most of them don't require high humidity so i don't feel it's justified for me to get a high-end humidifier for plants that don't really need it on a regular basis so what i thought of is maybe thrifting a humidifier as well i saw plenty of them at goodwill but then i remembered my brother used to have a humidifier that he no longer used so i checked in our garage if we still have it and we do so there's another way you can get a humidifier go ask your family and friends especially those who have babies or have kids they probably have humidifiers that they no longer use and you can ask them if they can pass it along to you so you can get one for free if not you could thrift one if you're not looking into buying a brand new one like me but whether you get your humidifier secondhand or thrifted please please make sure to thoroughly clean and really take time to clean your secondhand or thrifted humidifier like with a humidifier that I currently got it's been stored for a long time so I know it really needs to be cleaned it doesn't require any filter but I still saw a lot of build up in the small parts of the humidifier it took me about a week to thoroughly clean it I googled online how I can clean a humidifier thoroughly and basically I use a mixture of vinegar dishwashing soap hydrogen peroxide baking soda just to get every single gunk out in the humidifier and I made sure everything was removed before I actually started using it and even before I bought it in I made I had it run outside twice before I bought it in and started using it but actually right now I am not using it I probably will show you a footage it being run next to the citrus plants because I think those are the plants that actually would need a humidifier right now since those are still flowering and bearing fruits but right now since we still don't have the heater on and I don't have a space heater here I don't see the need to run the humidifier yet so this is the humidifier that I currently have it's a CVS brand it only has two settings low and high and on high this is how loud it sounds I don't know if you could hear it because it's not really that loud and especially I put it on low which is the setting that I actually use this humidifier on it's not really that loud so I'm okay with this and it produces warm mist so if I have to turn this off and move it somewhere else or have to refill it, I have to wait for it to cool down for at least 15 minutes. That's what it says in the warning right here. And before I refilled it, and this is also a recommendation that I will give everyone, whether your humidifier is brand new, secondhand, thrifted, is to clean your humidifier before you refill it. If your humidifier requires filters, do change it frequently or as needed because you don't want any buildup in your humidifier. Or provide a breeding ground for bacteria the mist that is produced is not just for your plants we will be breathing in the same air so we don't want that bacteria in our air circulation unlike the wish list humidifiers that i mentioned this doesn't have a timing feature so i'm not going to leave it on if i'm not in the room and to be honest i don't really plan on using it continuously throughout the day i'll probably just leave it on for about an hour in the morning and about an hour in the evening i think that's enough for my plants the humidifier doesn't need to be continuously on for them and I also still miss my plants every day it is also a technique to increase humidity in your room without a humidifier it's leaving open containers of water next to your plants or putting a dish with stones or pebbles on it and you put water in it and you put your plant on top of it I've tried doing that I'm not really a big fan of it just because I don't like leaving open containers in my room I have a carpeted floor and I don't want to provide a breeding ground for any pests in my bedrooms I'm not really keen on that method but if you think that would work for you go ahead and do it especially if you're not looking into getting a humidifier yet so that's it that's my take on a winter care for houseplants video I hope you found it somewhat helpful especially for new plant parents out there like me going through their first winter with their house plants and if you have any other tips and strategies for me on how to take care of my house plants over the winter 
please do leave them down in the comments and I'm not sponsored by any of the products I mentioned in this video but if you are downloading the planter app and plan to leave a review please do let them know that you found out about the app through through my wasteless life I would greatly appreciate it and if you are looking into purchasing the same artificial lights and grow lights that I mentioned in this video I have affiliate links down in the description and if you make your purchases through those links I'll greatly appreciate it it will help me a lot and yeah that's it Thanks again for watching. I see you. I appreciate you. Thank you for following along on my plant journey and have a plentiful day. Bye.